All right, well, I finished framing up my new fireplace here, and although I had an existing fireplace that I had to rip out beforehand, the way that I've constructed this can be built against any regular wall, so you don't necessarily have to have an old fireplace you're ripping out first. And that being said, let's get into how I built this thing. All right, so just a quick shot of the fireplace as it was in 1993. You know, yeah, brass insert, etched mirror. It's gotta go. All right, so once I got it all ripped out, got a nice big hole in the wall. And the first thing I'm gonna do is measure up where I've installed my new pot lights. And then I'm gonna transfer those measurements to the base of the drywall near the floor so that I can make sure that when I build the new fireplace, it's perfectly centered. All right, transferring the marks. Now between those lights is 60 inches and I want my fireplace to be 94 inches so I'm going to add an extra 17 inches on either side of that mark. And the reason I'm going with 94 is because my fireplace insert that I purchased is going to be 64 inches in total. So if I add an extra 30 inches or, or rather another, another 15 inches on either side of that then that'll keep the fireplace in proportion. All right so I'm marking out about 8 inches from the wall and I'm going to cut this tile. This is actual tile on the floor here. And I'm gonna cut it out so that I'll be able to build my wall right off my subfloor. Now, if you have hardwood or carpet you need to pull up, I really suggest you do that. Whenever you're building a wall or adding anything to your home, you wanna be right against the actual framing or the subfloor. All right, so I'm grabbing my grinder and I'm gonna cut up my tile. It makes a big mess, but again, it's gonna be worth it. You never wanna build anything on top of tile that's gonna hold any type of weight, because one day you'll look down and there'll be a nice big crack, then you'll just end up making more work for yourself. All right, so I grab my, grab my hammer drill, pull up all the old tile, get rid of all the thin set, and get right down to my subfloor, which is actually concrete here. So after I've cleaned all that up, I'm gonna grab my level and mark my wall where I need to cut out the drywall, because again, you don't want to build over top of drywall. You want to get right down to the framing of the house. So I'm using a Sawzall here, but I'm being very careful not to go more than a half inch deep because you really don't know what's going to be behind your wall. And the last thing you want to do is make more work for yourself. If you're not comfortable using a Sawzall, just pick up a little drywall knife. It's a little more labor intensive, but the chances of you damaging anything behind your wall are pretty slim. So I've cut two two by sixes at 94 inches one for a top plate and one for a base plate. I'm gonna install my top plate and screw it in place. And for the base plate, I'm gonna take some foam seal sealer first, put my base plate on top of it, and then I'm gonna measure it for my studs. The trick here is that I'm going to screw my studs into the top plate and the base plate, but I'm not gonna pin my base plate to my subfloor yet. I wanna keep it loose so that I can adjust it and make sure that my framing is level first. So now I can take my hammer and tap my base plate until I get my wall level. And at that point, I can pin my base plate to my subfloor. Once everything's leveled up, I can move on to framing for my fireplace insert. So I have a look at the directions, and then I can see that I need a height of 16 and an eighth, and a width of 60 and 11 sixteenths. So it's gonna look something like this. 16 and an eighth, and then 60 and 11 sixteenths in width. And the frame I need to build for the fireplace needs to be built out of two by sixes because as you can see here, my fireplace is five and three quarters. All right, so first thing I need to do is find the center. So I measure up. I make a mark right in the middle. Now from there, I find my 60 and 11 sixteenths, but I'm actually going to add another three inches to that for the width of two studs, which are an inch and a half each. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I mark one end, I mark the other end at 63 and 11 sixteenths. Grab my speed square, put an X right where I want the stud to be. When you cut your studs, you wanna cut them about an eighth of an inch longer than the measurement. You have to use a hammer to tap them in but that way they'll stay in place and it'll make it a lot easier for you to screw or nail it in place. Make sure everything's flush. I like to throw in screws, just makes it a lot easier if I need to make adjustments later. 
I usually put a screw in the front and then one on either side to hold it firmly in place. Grab my level, make sure everything's good. Now for the fireplace insert, I want to have it about 10 inches off the ground. So I cut up some scab pieces here at eight and a half. I'll screw those in place and then I'll throw in the bottom plate of the fireplace insert, which will be 63 and 11 sixteenths. I'll just screw this in place and I'll throw in a couple more eight and a halves just for support. Then I'll install the pieces I've cut at 16 and an eighth, which is the height of my fireplace insert. And with these two pieces installed, it now brings my width back to 60 and 11 sixteenths. So now for the top, I've actually assembled three two by sixes together and built a header. And the reason I'm doing this instead of just laying a two by six flat across is because I'm gonna have weight above here. I want something stable that's gonna be able to handle holding a giant TV. Make sure that everything's level. All right, so now I can frame up for my TV here. I'm only using two by fours. It doesn't need to be that deep, just enough to hide the mount. So right now I'm installing the top plate of my TV nook. My camera battery died. I didn't get to show you how I built the bottom, but it's basically just three two by fours cut at 15 inches with the base plate on top. And they're all screwed into my two by six header. One thing I should mention is that I'm fortunate to have access to my crawl space and power supply right below me here. So when the time comes, it's gonna be pretty easy for me to add receptacles for both my electric fireplace and for my TV. So just be cognizant of where you're able to pull power from before you begin a project like this. You wanna run a bead of glue all the way around before you screw your plywood on, just to ensure this thing's gonna be able to hold the weight of your TV. I'm just using three quarter inch birch because that's what I had in my garage, but you can use any three quarter inch plywood. All right, so this is where the mount's gonna go, throwing some screws there. And then the reason I've left some space up top is where I'm gonna put the receptacle for the TV. So now I need a scab and a two by four, so I have something to screw my cement board to in the corner. On the other side, before I scab in this piece, I noticed there's some black insulation, which means there's an air leak somewhere. That's what's turning the insulation black. So I'm gonna grab my knife, cut through the vapor barrier, pull out this insulation and find out where the leak is coming from. All right, so you see here right behind the drywall is a three inch ABS pipe. There's a gap that should have been filled back in the day, but it wasn't. So now I'm just gonna grab a can of spray foam, fill in that gap, put in some new insulation, seal up my vapor barrier, and I'm good to go. So you just wanna take advantage of these situations. If you happen to have your wall open and you see a problem, and it's just easy to fix it right then and there. You are gonna to have to make a small adjustment if you don't have access from behind like I do here. The problem is gonna be this piece of plywood. You're not gonna be able to get your drill in and screw this on if you have a wall right here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna assemble this H frame first. So these two pieces and these two pieces. You put those together on the ground, then you take your piece of plywood, you glue it and screw it, and you'll insert this whole thing as one unit, and then you'll come back, put in your supports, and then it's done. Well, I hope you got something out of this video, and if you did, you know, please consider subscribing. On the other hand, if you found the sound of my voice annoying, like, like my wife does, uh, I get it, you know, I get it. But anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch, and I, I hope to see you again. So until then, please stay safe.